Today we're going to be talking about the Donations Compare and Analyze reports. The current version of the software is 21.18.3. If you have questions throughout this webinar, you can type them into the questions box on your webinar toolbar. And Rachel is here with us, and she's going to try and answer those questions as we go along. Um, if they're relevant, I'll read them out loud and answer them. Um, and if we don't get to them during the webinar, we'll get to them at the very end. We'll save some time at the end. <coughs> now, today's topic, these Compare and Analyze reports, uh, there's quite a lot of them to get through. So I apologize if I'm kind of speeding through things a bit. Um, but feel free to stick around to the end to ask any questions that they don't get answered throughout the course of the webinar. Okay, so without further ado, let's go into our donations module. If you're following along in the donations workbooks, uh, the pages we'll be covering today are in workbook don the donations workbook 105, and it's pages 24 through 50. So as you can see, that's quite a few pages of information to get through. All right, so this is the donations module. We're going to come up to the top of the screen to reports and export. And then we're going to be looking at each of the different reports under the compare and analyze heading right here, our button with the scales. So when I click on that, the first one in the list is the pledge giving analysis. And the pledge giving analysis is probably the most flexible report in the donations module. It's the one that I suggest you go to if you're unsure of um, what else to try as far as donations reports, because it allows you to enter all kinds of different criteria and really customize what you're searching for and what information prints out. So we'll start with that one. And a lot of the options in these reports are going to be the same from report to report. So First, we have the Giving Pledging tab. The Giving Pledging tab is going to show up in a lot of different reports. It allows us to choose if we want to include people regardless of whether or not they gave. So that would be all, meaning the giving doesn't matter to the list that we want to generate. Or we could choose to only see those who gave on our report. So that would be anyone who gave even a penny or more if you choose that selection. Our next choice is only those with giving from. And this is for an amount. If it was a date, it would be in date format, like you see the date range on the right side of the screen. So this is an amount. So maybe you only want to see people who gave at least $50, for example. That's what you could put in that box. Now, it's going to default to saying no upper limit. So that means $50 or more. If you want to see only a certain range of people, you can uncheck no upper limit and say, maybe I only want to see the people who gave between $50 and $100. That is what you would choose if you want to see a, a specific amount that people gave. And the final choice in the giving section is only those who did not give. So if you wanted to see maybe who isn't participating anymore, you could choose to do a list of only those who did not give. Moving down the screen, we have a box here that's a drop down for and or or. Now, what that's saying is it's allowing us to combine the giving criteria at the top and the pledging criteria at the bottom in two different ways. If we use the and, it means the people on the list have to meet both whatever choice we made in giving and whatever choice we make in pledging. If you use or, that means they have to meet one of the two, or both. So or will get us more results, and will narrow the results, because the people have to meet both criteria, not just one or the other. 
And the folks who show up when you use and will show up when you use or because they do meet both of the criteria. So generally speaking, we leave that as and. I'm going to flip this top one back to only those who gave for our purposes. So the pledging may not be relevant if your church is not a pledging church. But if you are a pledging church, you have all the same options plus some more that you had for giving. You can choose only those who pledged. You can choose only those with a certain amount of pledging. Again, you can put in they pledged maybe at least $100 or whatever amount you would want to start with there. And again, it defaults to doing no upper limit, so 100 or more if we put in 100 there. Or if we uncheck no upper limit, you can do a range, so maybe 100 to 1,000 or what have you. And the final choice is only those who did not pledge. Now, with each of these four choices, we can also limit it to only certain types of pledges down here at the bottom. These are the frequencies listed down here of how often someone is pledging. Flat, meaning a one-time, annual, once per year, semi-annual, twice a year, etc. And then over here on the right, we can also limit it to only people who have met their pledges or only people who have not met their pledges. And if we leave them both checked, which is the default, then it will include people regardless of whether or not they have met those pledges. I'm going to toggle this back to all. And then we have some options on the top right side. This REC stands for Receives Statement. And so if you want to print only people who are receiving a statement, you can choose Receive Statement. Or if you want to see only people who are not set to receive a statement, you can choose Does Not Receive Statement. Similarly, we can choose in the Gives with Family box to include everyone or only people who give with their family or only people who do not give with their family. And then we have our date range. I'm going to toggle back to last year because we have more demo data in the system for last year. But you could set any range that you want. Typically, um, this report is going to be used for a full year range, but you could do a month, or you could do five years. You can enter really anything that you want to see into these date boxes. Then we have the option for show giver totals, which will include the total um, for each giver. If it's unchecked, it will not show a subtotal for each giver. And then we have the option of summary only. Summary only would just show accounts and not people. So let's take a look at that one real quick. I'm going to click Print. And it'll bring up a print preview. Let me erase my drawing from earlier. I thought last year had more information. Um, <laughs> the count is 50. And let's close this print preview real quick and go to some of the other tabs first. And we'll come back to the show giver totals and summary only. So the givers tab, I'm not going to go too deeply into. This is essentially the same selections you have for any membership report. So if you have questions about how to search using membership criteria, you can try watching one of the membership report videos. And that will explain how to search based on a status code, or any other information from the membership module. The one thing I'm going to point out here is the giver number. If you only want this list to include people who have a number, you can uncheck include those without number. You can also do just a range of numbers. Maybe your really high numbers are for visitors, and anything below 1,000 is for members. 
um, you could do just whatever range you want of giver numbers. And there's also the option of setting up named ranges if you have groups of envelopes for groups of people. Then you can do members only or visitors only by unchecking or checking these boxes here. If you want to include inactive folks, you can check the inactive box. And then you have options for membership groups, which are set up in the groups and classes in membership. And then donations individual and group givers. These are people who only exist in the donations module and don't exist in membership at all. The next tab is for accounts. We can choose to only print for certain accounts, or if we don't make any selections, we'll be printing for all accounts. And you can also choose a particular campaign to print from the campaign drop-down at the top. Now, this next tab, Columns, is probably the most important because this determines what information actually gets printed. Everything on the left side where it says Available Columns is what we could print. The Visible Columns is what will print. So in this case, um, it's set up for you know, a very particular report where someone wanted separate columns for each of these items. We can move items back and forth using these arrow buttons. And then, um, let's see, I'm going to add a couple of items. You can either use those arrow buttons or you can double click. I'm going to go with double clicking because um, it's faster. I'm going to get rid of receive statement. I'm going to put account amount, uh, the total given and total pledged. And then the next tab we have is sort. So this determines the order that it prints. You can set up to three sort fields. Keep in mind that the first one is going to be um, the, the primary sort order. So oftentimes you only need a sort field one and you don't need a two or a three. The next tab is for fonts if you want to change the way the report looks. That's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into that. And then additional options include membership category indicator means the letter in brackets. If we go back to this givers tab, if you want visitors to have a V beside their name and um, any other codes you might have set up, you can use this include membership category indicator checkbox. And then the D indicator would be next to any donations, individuals, or groups, these guys that we talked about. So now that we've gone through all the tabs, I'm going to come back to the giving and pledging. I've got my show giver totals checked, and I'm going to click print, and we'll take a look at what that reveals. So what that's showing us is the giver name, the account they gave to, or the accounts they gave to, and the total that they gave, and the total that they pledged. Now, if you also want to see an amount for each individual account that they gave to, we can go back to the Columns tab here, and we can put Given to Date. You'll notice some of these fields are bold and some of them are not. The bold ones are going to be all together whereas the non-bold ones are going to be grouped together. So if we go back to this print preview and take a look, you can see the name and the totals are in bold, and they're above, and then these separate accounts and the separate account totals are below, and they're not bold. So that's why you're seeing it that way in that screen. Now if I close the print preview again, come back to the Giving and Pledging tab, and I check Summary Only, and then click Print. All I'm going to get is a summary of the total each account received in my date range. And if I uncheck both of these and click Print, it doesn't really alter it that much. 
it just um, puts the totals all the way down at the bottom. Okay, quickly moving on through the next reports, we've got the campaign comparison. This one allows us to select several different campaigns and compare them side by side. Again, we have a Givers tab, a Columns tab, and each time you get a Columns tab, you're going to have different columns available to you. Now, when you're seeing Giver name, Giver number, and Giver as three separate things, Giver will have both the name and the number. So sometimes people only want to see the number or only want to see the name. So you have that option, but Giver will show you both. And then AMT is short for amount. So this is going to show us for each of those three campaigns I chose, the amount pledged, the amount given, the difference between the, the pledges for each campaign, and the difference given, and then the percentage of the difference pledged or given. Now, with these com campaign comparisons, you can also add what's called a calculated column. Now, you can create your own, but it's a little bit tricky, so we have some samples set up for you. For example, we can look at how many people pledged to both campaigns one and two. When I choose that, it's going to put the column heading in, and down here, it uses if ands, and thens to determine what is printed. So if you want to dig into this, that's fine. Give us a call and we can help walk you through it, or you can just stick with using the sample columns. And I'm going to come back here and limit it to just two campaigns so that we fit better on the page. And then you've got the sort tab like we talked about, a fonts tab, and more additional options. You can even choose to include those who did not pledge, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click print, and we'll take a look. And here we have the difference and the percentage. and a yes or a no if people pledged to both. And everybody in this case pledged to both. You can also check this totals only box if you just want a real small summary um, for the entire pledge. You can see the giver has been taken away, and it's just showing us the difference pledged, given, and and um, the percentage for the two different years, for the two different campaigns. Next, we have a giving comparison. So if you don't use pledging, you can use the giving comparison to compare the, the amount given in different date ranges. So if we want to type in our dates, we always type all the numbers. So we're going to do 2018. And then we click Apply Dates. Then I can use this minus year button to go back to 2017 and add that as a date range. Apply Dates adds the date range to this bottom portion. You could also use this to set up a month at a time if you wanted. And again, we have these same tabs that we've had on the other reports, Givers, Accounts, Columns, sort, fonts, and additional options. So columns looks good. And our giving range, we're just going to look at two years. And this first one that we're looking at gives us all of the details. The total given for each of the different years and the difference between the two. We can also take a look at some different options where we only get the totals and it doesn't break it down by account. 
or we could even just do totals only. That's not going to give us anything with the givers, just the total given in the first date range, the total given in the second date range, and the difference between the two. Okay, and like I said, you could use this to compare January, February, and March. You could do any kind of date ranges you'd like with this one. Now we've got two reports to go, but we've hit our time, so I apologize, but I am going to stick around and keep going through the rest of these. So for the step report, this allows us to compare different ranges of amounts of giving or pledging. So you start by choosing giving or pledging. And you then enter your date range. I'm again going to take it back to 2018 because we have more data there. You can choose a summary only format and you can choose to page break between steps. Now what are steps? Steps are these ranges of amounts. So if we want to know who gave at least one dollar, we'll put that in as the low amount and it says high is calculated. So what that means is if I hit enter twice on that one dollar amount, I can see who gave between one dollar and $100. And it calculates that the high is going to be 99.99. And so we can continue going and doing increments of whatever amount you'd like, but as you're typing them in, you can see you're putting in the low amount for each range of giving. And whatever is the final one always says no upper limit. I'm going to start to make some bigger jumps here. And that's how you set up steps. Now, again, just breezing through these, we've got all the same columns we've had, uh, sorry, all the same tabs that we've had before. And so I'm not going to go through each of those. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the print preview for a step report. And you can see it gives all of the names of the people who are in each range, their total given, total pledged, and then a total at the bottom for how many people are in that range and the total amount. If I choose summary only, that will remove the names and just give me totals. And if I choose page break between steps, each step will be on its own separate page. So if you've got lots and lots of people in each step, this could be useful if you want to break it up. All right. Finally, we have the statistical report. This one has very few options because it's just going to give us averages. We can choose to do a horizontal or a vertical layout. The horizontal has a few more choices, so we're going to take a look at that. The filter tab allows us to set a date range. We can choose a particular account. We can choose just one giver if we want to see you know, the statistics for one giver for the last five years or you've got a giver number range if you want to see certain giver numbers. Again, like we talked about before. And then we've got columns. And again, our only choices here are total giving and average giving, and then fonts. So if we go back to the horizontal layout and we take a look, it's giving us our breakdown of the dates in the month. So you can see for January of this year, um, these are the dates of the donations that we've entered. So the 6th, the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. You've got a total, and then you've got an average per giver, basically. And so if we close that, we can choose to include month totals first. And so that puts the total at the very end for the whole month. 
and you can choose show month total first if you want to put it at the beginning. So the total goes either on the right if we don't check show total first or on the left if we do. And then if we view it in a vertical layout, you'll see we have the same information just set up so it goes up and down the page instead of side to side on the page.